Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful that you have chosen to be in worship with us today here at First Methodist Houston. We are glad that you want to worship with us, whether you are in person, whether you are joining us online, and especially if this is your first time with us, we are especially thankful to be able to worship with you. Today we do get to, in fact, praise and rejoice together through our time of worship. Let us unite our hearts and minds in prayer this day. Gracious and loving God, we come before you. We come before you seeking things that only you can provide. We ask that in this time of worship together again that you pour out your spirit upon us, O Lord. Allow us to be remade into the image in which you originally created us and remind us that we are your children, that we are beloved, and that we have work to do in this world. God, we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to remain standing in mind, body, and spirit as you are able as we sing, O Worship the King. seated. Today is an exciting day in the life of the church and in our annual conference. This evening marks the beginning of the 2024 Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, and we, as First Methodist Houston, get to play host to that awesome responsibility. Our West Campus will serve as our site for conference starting today through Wednesday. And what I would like you to do are a few things. First, we would like you to pray. We would like you to pray for our bishop, the cabinet, all of the delegates to annual conference, 
for all of our laity and clergy. Specifically, I would ask that you pray for the 27, let me repeat that number, 27 lay delegates that we have from First Methodist, which include five youth. Amen? Amen? I would also ask that you pray for our 13 active and retired clergy members of First Methodist who will be representing our church throughout conference this week. Second, after you pray, we would ask that you volunteer. We want to show the conference the hospitality that we have for one another and show them what a great church we are. I believe there could be a QR code or not. Anyway, there is a place on our website where, there it is, where you could register to volunteer. We could use ushers and greeters, a number of ways that you can get involved. Third, we would like you to join us in participating throughout annual conference in a variety of ways. The first way we'd like to invite you in is through worship. Worship happens beginning this evening at 7 p.m. with opening worship and the Episcopal address. Then on Monday evening at 5.30, we'll have a service of remembrance, service of retirement Tuesday at 11.30 a.m., also Tuesday in the evening, the service of ordination and commissioning, and then a service of sending forth on Wednesday. All of the worship services are open to everyone, and you are welcome to come and attend. And lastly, I would ask that you come and attend Monday evening after worship. We will have family night at our Quillian Center. Now, family night is just for everyone. It is, in fact, for all of the people of the annual conference. You don't have to have little kids to come. But we invite you to come out. There will be concessions and food. Think of it as a family reunion of sorts, where our entire conference is invited to spend some hours and evening together enjoying all that we have to offer. I would like you to just be grateful and to thank you for the ways in which you are generous through your time, your talents, your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your servants. As we move toward this time of offering, I would ask that you unite with me as we unite our hearts and minds in prayer while our ushers come forward to receive our gifts and our offerings. Gracious and loving God, you pour out your gifts upon us even when we are undeserving. And we are thankful for the ways in which you bless us day in and day out. God, we ask that these gifts, this small portion that we return to you of the abundance of blessing that you have given to us, that it would be multiplied by you to go into the world to do the work that you have called this church to do. We ask that you would bless these gifts that we offer this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I invite you to remain standing as you are able as we affirm our faith together this morning using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And while you are being seated, I would invite all of our children to come forward for a time with Miss Courtney. I feel like we might have a couple more out there. I can start calling them by name if I need to. <laughs> Good morning, guys. My name's Courtney Hutchins. I'm the children's director here. So I'm going to show you a picture while we've got the rest of our friends coming down. Okay. How many people here, either down here in front or out in the audience, have ever seen an eagle or like a hawk flying around before? Oh, your school's mascot. Do y'all have a real flying eagle at school? Do y'all have like a real flying eagle at school? Okay, that would be cool. Um, okay, so this beautiful birds are really amazing to watch them flying around in the sky, isn't it? They spread their wings really wide and they make really big circles in the sky. And when you see an eagle flying, it makes flying look really easy. Now, what kind of bird is this one? Hummingbird, yep. Very different than an eagle, right? What's different about this bird than an eagle? Not as big, like way less big, right? Not as fast as an eagle. Oh, it's not a predator, these are all good things, yes. Now let's look at how the way an eagle flies versus a hummingbird flies. So eagles, they're like soaring around. Hummingbirds, they have to do something really different to fly. What do they do with their wings? They flap their wings really fast, right? I forgot to double check the number, but hummingbirds flap their wings like a lot of times per minute. And eagles can like zoom around in the sky without even flapping their wings very much, right? They get like a couple flaps in and then they can just kind of like soar around in the sky. Um, if an eagle, I mean, if a hummingbird stops flapping, what's gonna happen to them? They're gonna fall down, right? Now, um, have you ever felt like an eagle before? There's a verse in the book of Isaiah that um, kind of paints a picture for us, and it says that people who trust in God are like eagles. So I'm going to read the verse to you. This is from Isaiah 40, verse 31, and it gives a really good word picture, so try to like envision this in your mind. Those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So when eagles are flying around up in the sky and they're just like cruising around on their wings, is it because of their own power that they're staying up in the sky? Just because they're really strong there in the sky? What keeps them up? What keeps them from falling down? The wind, the air currents, the wind, right? The wind under them helps keep them up in the sky. It's not just their strength. It's not just because eagles are very powerful that they're able to stay up. It has to do with the way the wind holds them up. Um, and so... When we're tired of doing the right thing, tired of being nice to people, do you ever get tired of that? Tired of obeying your parents? Um, maybe you're not sure you can keep making the right choices with your friends at school, or life has just been really tough, like one thing after another, and the world just seems really impossible. Where do we get our strength from? What do you think? 
food. <laughs> yes, that is true. Sometimes you just need a good donut, right? So yeah, God, God's going to give us our strength, right? Our strength from, comes from God. He's kind of like that wind that keeps the eagles up. And so that's what that verse is telling us. If we try to do things on our own, all by ourselves, without relying on God, we're kind of like that little hummingbird. We have to use all of our energy to just keep doing the right thing, to just move forward in the day, to get through that really tough time. We can't do it on our own. But if we can lean on God, he gives us the strength that we need. He gives us the faith that we need, and he gives us all the power that we need to continue when things are great and when things are really, really not great. So let's pray for that today. Dear God, thank you so much for making us like the eagles. Help us to be like them, that when we're tired or frightened, we can rely on your strength. We know that life is so much harder when we don't trust in you. Help us to lean on you to get through this week until we are together again. Amen.
please remain standing for the reading of today's Scripture. Today's text comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 10 through 14 and 18 through 31. As I read, listen for a word from the Lord. See, the Lord comes with might, and His arm rules for Him. His reward is with Him, and His recompense before Him. Y'all can take that text down. It's the wrong one, media room. I'll start over again. See, the Lord God comes with might, and His arm rules for Him. His reward is with Him, and His recompense before Him. He will feed His flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in His arms and carry them in His bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. (laughs) Who has measured the waters in the hallow of His hand and marked off the heavens with a span? Enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as His counselor has instructed Him? Whom did He consult for His enlightenment? And who taught Him the path of justice? Who taught Him knowledge and showed Him the way of understanding? To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness compare with Him? An idol? A workman casts it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and casts for it silver chains. As a gift, one chooses mulberry wood, wood that will not rot, then seeks out a skilled artisan to set up an image that will not topple. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is He who sits above the circle of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when He blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, saying, My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. His understanding, it's unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Last week, we began a new sermon series called, I Believe. Throughout the season of summer and revival, we're going to be studying the basics of our faith that we profess weekly through the Apostles' Creed. What I want all of us to know is that the Apostles' Creed isn't just a set of words or phrases for us to memorize and then say by rote memory, but it's a way of teaching handed down to us over many generations throughout many centuries. It's meant to inspire faith. It's meant to inform our way of living, increase our trust in God. And so, my hope is that as a result of this series, your faith will be enlivened and enriched, and you'll have a firmer foundation of the faith upon which you stand. Last week, we began by looking at the first article. There's three in the Apostles' Creed, one for God the Father, one for God the Son, and one for God the Holy Spirit. Last week we studied, I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
Our text was Luke 15, where we learned that the all-powerful Creator God, the one who rules over us and all of creation, indeed the entire universe, is the one whose nature is to seek us out until we are found and to bring us safely home. Through three stories in Luke 15, we learned the nature of our powerful Father is one of pursuing us. There is no place that we can outrun God's presence, not even in the darkest valley or even in death. There is no place that we can go where we are outside of the care of our Father God. That is the nature of God, the one whom we worship, the one in whom we place our trust. Today, if the hymns that we've sung haven't given it away, we're continuing Article 1. I believe in God the Father Almighty. We're going to focus here, maker or creator of heaven and earth. Our God has made everything that is or ever was. All that was and is and ever will be was created by Almighty God, our Father in heaven. Everything well designed and well thought out, put in place to care for all of the other parts of creation. I love encountering God and reflecting on God's Word and God's presence through nature. One of my favorite things to do is to hike, to be outdoors. I don't care where, on a plane, on a beach, give me a mountain trail, get me out on the water. I love pondering God's presence and God's creative power in nature. Last year, I had the opportunity to travel with a group from our church to Egypt and Israel. And for me, the highlight of that trip was hiking to the top of Mount Sinai in the Sinai Desert. It was an experience unlike anything I've ever had before. We started our hike in the heat of the afternoon. We made it to the top just in time for the sun to set, illuminating all of the red rock looked like fire around us. And then as we began to make our descent back towards St. Catherine's Monastery, all of the stars of heaven began to glow. Have you ever been in a place where all of the city lights have disappeared and you can see the full glory of the heavens above? Being there on Mount Sinai was that very place. Our text today says that our Creator God not only made all of the stars, all of the hosts of heaven, but knows them all by name. I hear Big Bend National Park is a great place to see the glory of the heavens. The Psalms say that the stars pour forth speech and declare the glory of our God, the God who made them. All of creation joins together in praising our Almighty Father. And when we offer our voices together in hymns like we sang today, O worship the King, all creatures of our God and King, we're joining the chorus of all of creation, returning praise to God. Have you ever listened for it? Been outside in nature and listened to the sounds of praise that creation is emitting all around, the sound of the gentle breeze or violent wind blowing around us, the sound of waves crashing into the seashore and reshaping it right before our eyes, that sound to me contains within it the very power of God who marked off the boundaries of the land and sea. Have you heard it? Have you heard the song of the birds singing praises to our Creator? The song of each one is different, and God recognizes every one. Not only that, but the God who envisioned the universe and created earth, made the heavens and provided a place for you there in death and everlasting life, who ordered the chaos of this world, He made you and me 
And God cares very deeply for us all. We, like all of creation, are made to give glory and praise to God. There's a newer song that plays on Christian radio that I love. It's been out for a few years. It's called So Will I or A Hundred Billion Times. It's by Hillsong United. And the first verse of this song always moves me to tears as I hear the way that they have narrated the creation story. I want to share verse one with you of this song. It says, God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made, every burning star a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. All of creation, you and I, along with it, were made to give glory and praise to God. And like the birds of the air, there is a song that God has given only you to sing, to join in the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. But sometimes we fail to remember how much God cares for us, how God will leave the 99 behind in the safety of the fold to, to chase after the one who has wandered away, and upon finding the one, puts him on his shoulders and carries him safely home. We forget that God, as it says in the Psalms, knows the number of hairs on your head. God knows that some of you have less hair today than you did yesterday. God knows. He knows the number of hairs on your head. God knit you together in your mother's womb, intricately woven the psalmist said. If you ever feel inadequate, if you ever feel like you're not enough, know that God made you for a purpose that only you can fulfill in this world. Sure, the brokenness of this world can get to us, but don't let it overwhelm you because God has a plan and a purpose for you, and for you, for all of you, for us. The Scripture today raises a really important question for all of us. You ready? Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, this? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. In other words, Isaiah asked the question, why do we feel like God doesn't care about what's going on in our lives, like God has forgotten us, like God has wandered away and got busy doing something else? Why do we feel forsaken by the one who created us and knows us by name and even knows the number of hairs on our head? We all have confronted this question at one point or another, haven't we? This is where the Apostles' Creed gets personal, where you begin to get overwhelmed by a sickness or by old age that's caught up to you, right? Where caregiving is just depleting all of your resources and you don't know where you're going to fill your tank. And you go, God, don't you notice? Don't you care? Can I get it? a little relief here, or a child in your family is hospitalized unexpectedly and you feel like God is just completely absent, or someone dies before his or her time. We have all felt forsaken by God at some point or another, haven't we? And yet, God cares for us. The reality of who God is and the very nature of God is that there is no valley too dark, no place too far where God will not seek us out and find us and carry us home. As the psalmist say, even the darkness is light to you. Sometimes we feel like we're standing in a dark place and we can see the light shining over there, 
but it just won't make its way toward us. Well, the one who created light out of darkness is pursuing you in the darkness, shining lights that you just need the eyes to see. In this passage from Isaiah, it is such an interesting and fun text in answering this question, God, why don't you care? Why have you been so absent? Where are you, God? Isaiah almost rebukes the people. This this text is written to a nation in exile. Almost half a century before, Babylon came and invaded the land of Judah, ravaged the city of Jerusalem. Many sons died in war. Those who survived were carried off into Babylon as exiles in a foreign land, and those who remained saw a nation decimated and struggled to rebuild amidst an economy that was in shambles. These people felt forsaken by God. And so, through the prophet Isaiah, God asked some questions of the nation. First, He says, what are the nations to God? Sure, Babylon is pretty impressive. The whole might of their military came and overthrew all of your your, your structures and your governing uh, principles and your religious life. But to God, eh, don't put your trust in nations and don't let them overwhelm you because they're not impressive to God. That's a word to us in the time that we're living in, where it feels like nations are crumbling and falling apart, where nations can't get their stuff together and live a common life together. But we can trust in our God who looks upon the nations and says, follow after me. Look to me to guide you. Pray and become one people. Isaiah says, don't put your trust in the nations and don't let them overwhelm you because God is greater than the power and might of the nations. This is my second. To whom can we compare God? To one of those Babylonian idols? You mean one of those little statues made out of wood? You know, the the craftsman has to look far and wide for a wood that won't rot. They might be lucky and find a gift of mulberry wood because You wouldn't want your idol to rot. That would be embarrassing. And they have to be covered with gold to protect them. And and a a craftsman fashions a silver chain in order to fasten it to a surface so it doesn't get stolen. You wouldn't want your God to be stolen, would you? He says, think about our Creator God in the context of the little g gods of the nations. They're nothing. They rot. They're made of wood, gilded with metal. God is so much bigger and mightier and more powerful than all the little cheat gods that human beings can think up. So don't put your trust in God, and don't get overwhelmed by all of the idols around us, wealth, busyness, success. Don't put your trust in those things. God is bigger and grander and better than all of it. Or what about the rulers? Yeah, they get together and they make their plans and they conspire. They are sure they're all powerful, Isaiah says. But to God, eh, they're like grasshoppers, where in a moment God can go, <sighs> make them all evaporate and disappear. Don't put your trust in the rulers of the nations or be overwhelmed by them because God is so much more powerful than all of them. Finally, Isaiah asks the question, what about the celestial bodies that the Babylonians think order all things on earth? Who do you think created those and rules over them? God is the God of all of the universe. God orders everything and keeps it within its boundaries. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. So now we return back to the question with which we began. How can you say, my way is hidden from the Lord? 
that God does not care, that God is absent, that I am utterly forsaken. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. God never wasn't. God always will be. Wow. The creator of the ends of the earth. God does not grow faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God will give power to the faint and strength to the weary and the powerless. For us, even youths will be faint and grow weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But when we trust in the Lord, He will renew our strength. And then we shall mount up with wings like eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not grow faint. God's power at work within us and the world is more powerful than any power the world can grant. And we have to trust in the word of the Lord and in the presence of the Lord that God truly has this. And here's where the rubber meets the road. God made it personal in coming to us in the incarnation as Jesus Christ. He left the glory of heaven and entered this world that He made to show us the fullness of life, our full created potential. In the life of Jesus, we see the very face of God, the God who made everything and made you, and made me. In Jesus, we see what life was meant to be without all the brokenness and temptation and sin that mars it all the time. That song that I quoted earlier, So Will I, verse 3 talks about the incarnation. I want to close here because next week we bridge to I believe in Jesus Christ as only Son, our Lord. It sets the incarnation and the creation story, saying, God of salvation, you chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride, and on a hill you created, the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die. But as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear where you lost your life so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind me or behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done, every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. When we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, we know that the God who is all-powerful and almighty, who ordered the world and the universe, knows the number of hairs on your head, who cares for you and provides for everything you need, and who pursues you even to the utter darkness of this world and pursues you even in the shadow of death. That God, that creator, is the one who never leaves you or anyone behind. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we go to God, let us unite our hearts and our minds in prayer. Gracious and loving God, you are so much bigger than we could ever imagine. Your ways are not our ways, and your thoughts are not our thoughts. And yet, Lord, we must confess that at times we think we know it all. We wonder why you might be absent from the pain in our lives or the pain in the world around us. And yet, if we are to read Scripture and understand you are everywhere, all the time, always present with us. You have no equal and no rival in the world, and yet... We feel alone at times, God. God, we pray that this day you would redeem us once again with your spirit, that we might know that you are present with us in our lives, in our ups, in our downs, in our victories, in our defeats, that you walk with us. 
that there is no part of our lives that is hidden from you, and that there is no part of the cosmos that is hidden from you either. God, we pray that we might take comfort in knowing that you know all things and that you know us by name, and that you have created us in your image to do things only we can do in this world. God, we ask that you would give us the boldness to live out this faith that you have given us, that we might become the people that you have called us to be, that we might show the world what love is. And we ask that in this time you unite our hearts, our minds, and our voices as we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to go out into the world to live our lives in praise of God, we offer this time of prayer. You may have something that has gone great in your life, a blessing that you need to give God thanks for. Don't leave here today without praising God's name and telling God thank you for the blessings in your life. There may be a burden that you lugged in here, like a heavy boulder, that you need to leave right here at the foot of the cross to place it upon Jesus. I hope that you'll spend some time in prayer before you go because the yoke of our Lord is easy and His burden is light. Let us stand together and join our voices together with all of creation as we sing, This Is My Father's World.
Amen. As we move from this service of worship and step forward in our faith, let me remind you of some things that are coming up in the life of the church that you can participate in. If you have a child, we have vacation Bible camp this summer. Yes, not Bible school, Bible camp. It's an all-day thing. We're going to have it twice, once on our west side and once down here on west campus. Those kids get to be a part of our Camp Quillian uh, throughout the rest of the day, they'll come to us for the specialty camp, which is scripture and, and Bible camp and all those sorts of things, and they could do the recreation through our Quillian Center. Downtown, we have some special opportunities for them to get involved with as well. And then if you would like to volunteer, we can't have vacation Bible camp without vo volunteers. If we are going to share God's love with others, we need you to be present in that work. Last but not least, our all-youth mission trip in July to Lufkin, Texas to do work for our neighbors in need is coming up. And so all of our students who have completed 6th through 12th grade are welcome to go. And if you are feeling called to serve alongside students, please let me know. We'd love to have you. It will be hot, but we're going to do good work together. As we prepare to go out into the world to sing that song God created us to sing, I want to make sure we didn't miss this last verse that we just sang. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me never forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King. Amen? Amen. Let the heavens ring. God reigns. Let the earth be glad. There's no place that you can go outside of the presence of God, no place too dark, no place too far, where God will not search you out and bring you home. Go forth walking in that truth and sharing it with all that you encounter so that they can become who they fully are meant to be. Go forth today and every day and be the church. Amen.